Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the Huion Canvas Studio 16, which is a 15.8 inch Windows tablet targeted at digital artists because this has pen support for drawing. First of all, a disclaimer, this is not a sponsored review because Huion did not send out any review units. I actually have to buy this with my own money. And having said that, if you guys are interested to buy this product after watching this review, consider using the affiliate links that I have for you in the video description below to make your purchase so that I can recoup some money or make less losses whenever I have to spend money to buy products to review. This video is going to be quite long, so if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below, or you can use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. Let me give you the bottom line up front. For a first generation product, this is actually pretty good, but there are of course some downsides and limitations. Let me talk about the good things first. This is a 15.8 inch IPS LCD, so this is a very big, comfortable size to work with. The color support is 100% Adobe RGB, so this is a color accurate display, and the resolution is 1440p, so all the visuals look sharp. Drawing performance of the pen is excellent. The pen is accurate and sensitive. I would say the drawing performance is slightly better compared to the Apple Pencil and definitely better than the Microsoft Surface Pen or the Slim Pen 2. More specifically, the initial activation force is very low and the lines are able to taper smoothly and naturally and pump rejection works pretty well. For the downsides, let's talk about the three main ones first. The first downside is for tablet. 1.7 kg is very heavy. So this is not a tablet you will be able to use comfortably while holding with one hand. You will have to put this tablet on a stand if you want to draw with it. The second downside is probably the biggest downside. The battery life is just four to five hours when I'm using the display at 25% brightness. The third downside is while this product has one year warranty, if something goes wrong, it means you have to ship this back to Huion and the shipping is going to be quite expensive because this is 1.7 kg. So that's one potential deal breaker personally for me. So those are the main pros and cons. I'll cover more later in this video. Let's take a look at the items included in the box. Included with the purchase are one microfiber cleaning cloth, one artist glove, the pen case, the Huion PW550 as pen, quick start guide, 65 watt USB-C charger with the adapter which you can choose on the ordering page, a 1.5 meter long USB-C to USB-C charging cable. This does not transmit video, so this is not a video cable. And this is the Huion ST200 stand. When I ordered the tablet, the free gift is the Huion Kidao Mini K20. I checked yesterday and the free gift has changed to the figurine which is not as useful as this keyboard shortcut. Let's talk about the design. So this is a very clean and simple design. There are rounded corners, the bezels are thicker than the iPad and the Samsung tablets. The bezels are almost uniform except it's thicker at the top. There is a 5 megapixel front camera and this is off-centered to the left side for some reason. On the left side are two USB-C ports with USB 3.2 transfer speeds. And you can see some vents there for ventilation. This is a 2 watt speaker. There's another one on the other side. The volume from the two stereo speakers is loud but the audio quality sounds hollow. Charging is through USB-C and there is a power light indicator to show you the battery is charging or has fully charged. On the top, there is the power button here at the corner with built-in fingerprint sensor which is quite effective and there are more fans here. Now the fan noise is on the low side even when the fans are spinning at full speed. On the right side of the tablet, there is the volume control and a 3.5mm audio jack. The back has this 8 megapixel camera and a shiny Huion logo. And this is matte textured metal. And this is the kickstand at the bottom. 
and there are three hinges. The hinge is quite stiff, but the hinge is not strong enough to prevent the tablet from moving down when your hand is resting on it. So this design obviously is very similar to the Microsoft Surface Pro. Build quality for this tablet is quite solid. However, in the first few days when I tried to twist the tablet, I could hear some squeaking sound, but now the squeaking sound is gone. This tablet is also quite thick at 11.9 mm, so it's too big for me to put in this dock here that I occasionally use for my other tablet. If you want to bring this tablet around, maybe to your office or school or some other place, make sure you get a cover or sleeve or bag that can protect the screen because you don't want to crack this screen. There are other tablets out there that have the connector at the bottom that allows you to use a keyboard case which comes with a cover to protect the screen but not with this Huion tablet. One downside to this design is the sides are completely flat and they are quite smooth so it's not that easy to lift a 1.7 kg tablet up from the sides but thankfully the speakers here are indented slightly so you can lift the tablet up from this area. The tablet has to be used on a stand because it's 1.7 kg and this is the Huion ST200 stand that's included. There is a latch here which you can fold out and there is rubber padding here. And this stand can be deployed at two heights. This is the taller height. This is less than 45 degrees. There are some holders at the bottom which you can use but it doesn't change the height that much. So this is the other height, the lower angle. The stand is very stable and since you can fold the stand flat, you can bring the stand around very easily. Since this stand cannot prop up the tablet vertically, you will have to rely on the kickstand to prop up the tablet vertically. Personally for me, I have the tablet on my own tablet stand so that I can have this higher, closer to my eye level so that it's more comfortable when I'm doing computer related work or watching shows when I'm not drawing. If you are wondering whether you can draw on this stand, you actually can. You can fold the stand like this and draw on it. But the base is not that big so it's not that stable. And because this stand actually rotates, when you rest your palm on the side, it can actually move the display. If you really want to get a taller stand, I recommend you get a stand that does not rotate because you can always rotate the stand easily by lifting the stand up and also try and get a stand that does not fold here because if this stem is lower like this, this is a 1.7 kg tablet so the hinge may not be strong enough to support the weight of this tablet. Let's talk about the display. This is a 15.8 inch IPS LCD and this is a comfortable size to work with for drawing. This is how big the display is compared to A4 size drawing paper. So this display is slightly shorter but much wider than A4 paper. The resolution is 1440p which is 2560 by 1440 and the visuals are sharp with no noticeable pixelation when working from one arm's distance away. Cursor tracking is quite accurate up to the extreme edge. This display is laminated but there is still a little gap between the line and the pen tip and that gap is more obvious because my camera is pointing from the side. From where my eye is, the gap is not noticeable so when you're drawing, the line will appear directly beneath the pen tip. The thing with edge glass or matte textured glass is there can be some green or color noise on top of the LCD and that is kept to a minimum on this Huion tablet. This display has fantastic color accuracy. I measure color support for 100% Adobe RGB, 100% sRGB, 96% NTSC, 95% P3 and the maximum brightness measured is 262 nits which is quite far off the advertised 400 nits 
but 262 nits is still sufficient for use in a bright room environment. In fact, right now I am actually using the display at 50% brightness in my room, which is quite bright. This surface is said to be anti-glare edge glass and it does reduce reflections slightly because this is how reflections look on glossy surface. The anti-glare works quite well, even though I have strong light source coming from the left side, I don't really see any glare or diffuse reflections around this area. So contrast and colors are not affected. And speaking of contrast and colors, this is the viewing angle. So the colors don't shift much when viewed from extreme angles. Anyway, this display will look the best when you're looking straight at it. One of the main selling points for this tablet is the touch screen. Drawing apps which are designed around touch and finger gestures will work really well on this tablet. And even for desktop apps that have a lot of palettes, um, some of the icons may be small, but on a 15.8 inch tablet, those icons, the text can still look big. And this is Windows OS, so you can scale those UI elements to become bigger. How well finger gestures work will depend on the apps you use. For example, with Concepts, which is actually my main illustration app that is available on iPad, Android, and Windows, there is supposed to be a shortcut to undo when you use two fingers to tap on the screen, but for this version of Concepts, for some reason, it does not work. Anyway, this is Windows, so you can still use keyboard shortcuts. And this is Clip Studio Paint, CSP, and this shortcut works. This shortcut also works with Kritar, but this shortcut is not available for Photoshop, Affinity Photo, and Medibank Paint Pro. Palm rejection works well, generally speaking. For drawing apps that have pen-only input, you will have perfect palm rejection. For example, with Medibank Paint Pro, which has pen-only input, even if you want to draw with your finger, you will not be able to do so. And when you have your palm on the display, you will not be able to introduce any straight strokes. But with the pen, you can still draw and you can still use finger gestures. So palm rejection with this app is perfect, but palm rejection with Windows is not perfect, which is why I have all these palettes on the side. Because if I have some of the palettes on the left side, when I rest my palm here, my palm can actually still tap on some of these icons and sliders. And notice the taskbar is at the bottom and there are some icons here. So my palm can also activate some of those icons as well, which happens quite often. So I prefer to have the taskbar on top. And with Windows 10 or 11, when you slide up from the right side, there is this notification panel which will appear. As long as I am drawing and my palm is not at the extreme edge, it's going to be difficult for me to slide this thing out. It is possible to use this tablet as an external display. You can use this as a wireless external display, but not as a cable or wired external display. So to use this as a wireless external display, you have to install this wireless display app from the Windows settings, which I have already done so. And after that, just tap here, and it says that this tablet is now ready to connect. So on your other computer, just hit the shortcut Windows K and select this tablet, and this will go into this extended uh, desktop mode. And now you can move your windows or apps from one display to the other. This display will run at full resolution, which is 2560 by 1440, but the refresh rate is just 30 Hertz instead of the 60 Hertz. And there will be some latency. The latency will be determined by your local Wi-Fi network speed. So if your network is slow, there is going to be noticeable lag. The visual quality is fantastic. This visual quality is very sharp. The USB-C port on the Huion tablet can output video, so you can connect this tablet to an external monitor. Here I have the tablet connected to this portable external monitor. 
If you want to use this type of connection, make sure the tablet is connected to power source. Otherwise, this monitor is going to drain the battery really quickly. And if you want to connect this to a desktop monitor, it would be good if that desktop monitor can actually charge the tablet. And since this is a cable connection, there is no lag, there is no latency. For some reason, I am not able to use this USB-C to HDMI adapter to connect this Huion tablet to my desktop monitor, which does not have USB-C port. I'm pretty sure this works and the cable works, so maybe this is not compatible with the tablet or the tablet does not work with USB-C or HDMI adapters. When using dual displays, I usually like to have the switch display shortcut set to the pen's side button so that I can move the cursor from one display to the other and now the cursor is on the other display and let me press the shortcut again to move the cursor back. For this shortcut to work, the pen has to be close to the display. Now there is one bug that I discovered at the time of making this review. If I use my finger gestures now to zoom in and out, notice nothing happens. That's because the finger gesture is actually affecting this display. So if I zoom in and out, notice I'm actually controlling that display. So this is definitely a bug that Huion needs to fix. It is also possible to use this tablet as a screenless pen tablet. All you have to do is set the desktop to show only on the external monitor using the Windows settings. Let's talk about the pen which you can find inside this pen case. This is made with metal and it's very solid and has this nice matte texture to it. At the top here, you can find the replacement nibs. There are only three felt nibs and three plastic nibs. So let's slide out the holder and take out the pen. There is a nib remover here at the bottom. The model number for this pen is PW550S. I'm not sure if there are other pens that are compatible with the tablet. So this pen looks good. The build quality is solid. It's comfortable to hold and there is this nice matte texture with good grip. This pen is not powered by battery, so no charging is required. These are two customizable side buttons. I have one for right click, the other one is for switch display. The pen tip is firm and has no movement when in contact with the drawing surface. This pen uses the so-called Huion Pentec 3.0 Plus. This pen supports tilt and slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. Huion provides plastic and felt nibs for drawing. If you use the plastic nib, it's going to be very slippery on this surface. So I actually have the felt nib here, which provides a bit more texture when drawing. Let's hear the difference between the felt nib and the plastic nib. It may not be obvious, but the tapping sound is more dampened with the felt nib. Let's see what the driver can do. But before that, I want to comment on the anti-glare screen again. Right now, I have the camera pointing directly at the screen and my face is in front of the screen. But the reflection is not obvious, which is really nice. Okay, back to the driver. This driver is pre-installed. And this driver does not have many features because there are no physical shortcut buttons. So under press key here, you can choose to enable or disable the touch interface. Under working area, you can just leave this as default since the whole screen will map to the working area. If you are left-handed, it doesn't matter because there are no physical shortcut buttons on the left and right. And when you rotate the tablet, like physically there is auto rotation so you don't have to worry about rotation here under digital pen this is where you can customize the two side buttons um, you can choose to 
input a keyboard shortcut for me i use dual display so i have one button set to switch screen which works really well and there is windows ink which you may have to enable or disable for troubleshooting when pressure is not working as expected and this is where you can adjust the pressure curve using the three control points or choose from the three uh, presets and here you can test the pan and i forgot about this calibration button here if for some reason the cursor is offset from the pen tip you will have to do monitor calibration to move the cursor below the pen tip time for some line tests the app that i'm using is midibank paint pro initial activation force of this pen is very low you can draw with the faintest of pressure even with a thick brush selected let's draw some slow diagonal lines i usually do not do the ruler test because i don't draw with a physical ruler on the display so today I just want to show you how straight the lines can be. Let's draw really slowly. This is very straight. Line transition from thin to thick. This is very smooth and also these are diagonal lines and I do not see any jitter or wobble. Let's see if I can maintain consistent pressure to draw lines with consistent width. Yes, and dots can be drawn by just tapping on the display and this will have pressure sensitivity as well. This is how the lines taper. The lines are able to taper smoothly and quite naturally. And this is cross hatching. Looks fine. The pen supports tilt and it works well. The cursor will follow the direction of the pen. Let's look at the latency. So this is the usual latency as the line is trying to catch up with the pen tip. This does not affect drawing performance and this is not something I would notice since I don't draw long sweeping lines while I'm drawing unless I'm testing for the latency. Drawing performance of this pen is fantastic. This pen is accurate and sensitive. The performance is consistent, predictable and there are no surprises. And this pen is more sensitive compared to the Apple Pencil, Samsung S Pen and the Microsoft Slim Pen 2. More specifically, when you're drawing with minimal pressure, this pen is able to pick up the minimal changes in pressure while drawing. And now let's talk about the drawing experience. So this is just a random sketch that I drew. This app again is Midibank Paint Pro. I like this app because it's free. If I have my keyboard, I will prefer to use my keyboard for all the shortcuts instead of using finger gestures because I like to keep my hand in drawing position rather than switch from drawing to finger gestures to drawing. That's just personal preference. Let's take a look at the thick juicy lines. Let's see how the lines taper very nicely. and this is very responsive the pen definitely is very sensitive so you can draw thin lines really easily even with a thick brush which is this thick unfortunately this app does not have double finger undo anyway i'm using my keyboard shortcut so it doesn't really matter the iPad Pro is a fantastic portable device for drawing but the thing is there are still some artists who prefer drawing with pen displays or pen tablets because the pen offers finer control compared to the Apple Pencil which already is very good it's just that this pen is more sensitive if you are an artist that requires precision with your line art, for example, if you are a comic or manga artist, 
the line quality you can get from this is definitely good enough for professional comic drawing for the touch workflow i guess that really has to depend on the app you use for desktop apps such as Medibank Paint Pro, Krita, Clip Studio, Affinity Photo, Photoshop, I think you will probably be more productive with the keyboard instead of going all in with touch because these apps are designed for desktops. The buttons, the icons, the text, the layers, everything here is on the smaller side which is not easy to tap on with the finger but with the pen it is obviously easier so far my workflow for touch and finger gestures is just pan zoom in and out rotate finger gesture support for windows app is actually quite limited if you look at procreate on the ipad there are like way more finger gestures you can swipe the layer for locking opacity you can pinch to zoom the canvas to 100 percent and there are so many finger gestures but for windows apps uh, it's kind of limited to mostly pan zoom rotate i'm actually quite disappointed that the shortcut to undo with two fingers with concepts is not working because um, i actually rely on that shortcut a lot so this issue is specific to the app it's not due to huion hardware and i will definitely contact the concepts developer to tell them about this problem if your main drawing app is a tablet app that relies on finger gestures and the finger gestures don't work it's going to be quite troublesome so for example if i'm using this app and i do not have the keyboard to undo i will have to keep my finger near the undo button um, but if i have the keyboard i can of course use all the keyboard shortcuts that i have and it doesn't really matter whether or not the finger gestures work i mean the default gestures for zooming in and out pan and rotate will definitely work it's just that the extra finger gestures are um, don't quite work for some of the apps I use. The tablet doesn't get that warm during drawing. It will only get warmer when you are charging the tablet and this area will be the warmer area. This area here won't be that warm. So you can definitely work on this tablet for hours without feeling discomfort from the heat. If your main drawing app is not a tablet app, such as Concepts, sketchable sketchbook pro i feel like the touch screen is not that crucial so if your main drawing app is clip studio photoshop midibank all those desktop apps you can still use a pen display without a touch screen and i don't think your productivity will decrease let's talk about the performance of this tablet with the 11 gen intel processor and 16 gigs of ram that's inside Overall performance of this tablet is very smooth. The only time when I experience lag is when I am exporting photos in the background and I'm doing something else. So if I'm surfing the web and there are photos exporting in the background, yes, I will feel the tablet is sluggish. But if I'm just drawing and switching between apps, or if nothing is exporting in the background, there is no 3D model, exporting no videos exporting then the performance is very smooth this by the way is blender the graphics in this tablet is the intel iris xe i did not test gaming on this tablet because i did not buy this tablet for gaming but for blender for 3d work um, yes you can use some 3d software but my model is actually not very complex this is my apartment and this is my table I'm recording this video somewhere here <laughs> let me turn on the render view yeah this is still quite responsive uh, with real-time rendering by the way the windows 11 that comes with this tablet is not activated but don't worry you can just activate it yourself for free there will be a troubleshoot button here that you have to click and once you click on that windows will be activated when you first boot up windows the only bloatware included are those included 
with Microsoft Windows such as Netflix Prime Video which you can uninstall very easily. The only software Huion has installed is the Huion tablet driver. Should you get this Huion tablet versus the iPad Pro or the Samsung tablets or the Microsoft Surface Pro? Well, it really depends on what you want to do with your device. If you just want to draw, I would say go with the iPad or the Samsung tablet. But if you want to do more than just draw, consider the Huion tablet or the Microsoft Surface Pro because Windows OS is just more versatile. There are things you can do with Windows OS that you can't with tablet OS. The main difference between Windows OS and tablet OS is the desktop apps on Windows OS will have all the features. If you are using the tablet versions of Adobe apps, Affinity, and Microsoft Office, those apps will only have a subset of features. I am able to edit photos using Adobe Lightroom on the iPad Pro, but I'm just way more productive with desktop apps. I only draw on the iPad and the Samsung tablet. For graphic design work, for video, for photo work, I use desktops, either Windows or Mac OS. Should you get this over a pen display? If you already have a computer, it would make more sense to get the pen display without the computer built in because that's more affordable unless you need the portability because this is an all-in-one device with battery and a computer so you don't have to connect this with cable to anything which makes this portable and one of the main selling points for this but if you don't need the portability a pen display is going to be a more affordable choice and if you already have a computer, it's probably not that necessary to have another computer unless your old computer is really slow. Battery life is not ideal. I was only able to get about four to five hours of battery life with brightness at 25 to 50%. So four to five hours is actually not surprising for a Windows tablet, unfortunately. From what I have read online, battery capacities for lithium batteries will drop to 80% after 300 to 500 charge cycles. So if you use the battery in this tablet for a full day, you will have to charge this tablet at least two times. If you work five days a week for 50 weeks, that's 250 days times two, that's 500 charge cycles after a year. For a first generation device, this is actually quite an impressive product from Huion, but there are many areas to improve. So Huion, if you're watching this, improve the battery life, reduce the weight, have the angled sides so that it's easier to lift the tablet, and include another USB-C port on the right side if you can, and maybe throw in micro SD card slot or maybe two micro SD card slot because this tablet is so big I'm pretty sure there is space to fit all those extra features. Is the Huion Canvas Studio 16 worth the money? Well the pricing of 1699 US dollars is actually quite competitive to the Microsoft Surface Pro 8 with 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage and the Slim Pen 2, which you have to purchase separately. The main difference would be the display size 13 inch for the Surface Pro versus 15.8 inches. There are other minor differences, but those are not crucial. So the pricing is on the competitive side. The main downside for this tablet for me really is the battery life. I really wish the battery life can be longer. Anyway, these are the different prices in different countries or continents. In Europe, it's 2,299 euros, which translates to 2,447 US dollars. So that is 44% more compared to the US retail price. In UK, it's 55% more compared to the retail price. It's 2,645 US dollars. That is insane. In Canada, it's also more expensive. It's 2,091 US dollars. In Australia, it's also more expensive, 2,171 US dollars. You do get free shipping to Europe, UK, US, and Canada. I'm not sure about Australia. 
and shipping is not free to Singapore. I had to pay for shipping. There are two options for shipping. There is the standard delivery, which is going to be DHL. It's two to three days. There is expedited shipping, which is going to be three times more expensive. I'm not sure what service they are using. Anyway, you don't have to go for expedited shipping because the standard delivery with DHL is already two to three days, which is really quick. So is this worth the money? Well, you can decide based on the findings that I have presented. The drawing performance, the display quality and the overall build quality is definitely right up there. So it's just the battery life that I'm not that satisfied with. But if you are just using the tablet mostly in a location where you have access to power, then perhaps the battery life is not too big of an issue so if you guys are interested to buy this tablet do consider using the affiliate link that i have for you in the video description below to help me out i do earn some money through the link but at no extra cost to you and the money that i earn goes into buying products for review if you have other things you want me to test with this tablet let me know in the comment section below I will put out another video to compare the drawing performance of this tablet with its pen versus the iPad Pro, the Samsung tablets and the Microsoft Surface Pro. So do subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get notified when that video appears. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye.